Hello, how you doing? Charlie Davis here and welcome to PAW, Painting Animals in Watercolor. Today's free quick mini lesson will be painting this jumping fox. The sketch will be available for download. I'll be using Windsor Newton's Cotman watercolors. They're inexpensive. Great way for somebody to start uh, learning how to paint in watercolors without the expense. The colors I'm going to use are yellow ochre, cadmium hue, orange, cadmium red hue, sepia, that's what they are here. And for the blacks, I'm going to use a combination of Prussian blue, burnt sienna, and mix in with a little bit of Payne's gray. There you go. And uh, again, sit back, take a deep breath. It's okay. You can do this. Take care. When I come back, we'll get started. Okay, welcome back. Um, if you're interested in seeing how to transfer a sketch onto watercolor paper, I have another video or two or three or four, a bunch of videos that show you how to transfer the sketch. You'll notice the size is smaller than the regular lessons. It is what's called ACEOs or Art Cards Editions and Originals. Uh, they're basically miniature works of art that measure somewhere between two, uh, typically uh, two and a half by three and a half. They're also known as artist trading cards and that's where if you want to find another artist who will trade a piece of work for you, with you rather, get my paint set up on the side here. I'm also going to record the palette on a separate uh, camera so that you can see it. And um, what I'm doing is activating this orange, which is just basically taking water, getting it getting the paint wet and then you kind of scoop it up put it down on your palette. The palette I'm using as you can see is a porcelain plate. You may be wondering why I'm not using the plastic palette part of the Cotman paint and that's because you'll see here it's, as I'm putting it down, we get no beading. So it's a smooth color transition. So, part of your arsenal, <laughs> painting arsenal, will be paper towels. So you wipe off your brush with it, take off extra water, anything that might let me zoom out here a little bit while I'm talking and getting all set up. <clears throat> Next I'm going to activate the yellow ochre. I already did the orange. The reason I'm going with these size... the size I've chosen, the art cards, the A CEO card or art card is because they're quick, they're easy, get a lot in in a small study. All right, so I got my yellow ochre down, Put that there, and I'm gonna do the cadmium red hue as well. That's kind of a orangish color, dark orange, and I'll be mixing that in, 
as you saw the final piece in the introduction that there's a blending, there's layers. Okay, that should be good. If I need to do more, I can. Put a little bit of water with that. Like I said, you can see that it's not beating up like it would be on a plastic palette. If you do have a plastic palette and it beads up, you can actually take a little bit of sandpaper and light grain, actually a very fine grain if you can, and scratch into it to give it a little bit of fine texture, or you can use toothpaste too. Rub it in, move it around, and then you can, again, it, the whole thing is to get a little bit of texture on it. Okay, sepia is the other one I'm activating. Towards the time I need the blacks, I will show you how to make that as well. Alright, so again these art cards are meant for trading. You can sell them if you want, I have, and I've sold them for $20 actually as an original piece of art. So if you want to do that, that's one way. Technically, ideally, they came out to be traded among artists. And again, the size is two and a half by three and a half. And you can find other artists to do trades and go from there. All right, so I'm taking some water. It's a clean brush. Oop, oop, I lied. That's why you rub it on the paper towel to see if it's clean. All right, so I'm gonna wet this down a little bit. Let me zoom in again. All right, so go with the yellow ochre. Gonna get it wet. Thing with watercolors is the more water the more transparent the paint will be. You can see I'm pulling it out. You always want to use a test card as well of the same paper that you have to see what you got going. That's a little more than I want, so I'm gonna add a little more water. And you always start light to dark with watercolors, building up on layers. All right, that seems good. Pardon my hand as it goes through. All right, so I'm gonna wet the fox a little bit. This will help with spreading your paint. I'll show you what I mean in a second. You gotta remember the, the white spots. Don't try and leave those open. I don't really use liquid frisket or masking when I paint. I'm dipping into the water that's got a little bit of a... Purposely, I put in the sepia brush, that had the, the brush that had the sepia paint on it, so that I would get a bit of a tone, a light, light tone. So you'll see the outline and I'm just kind of adding water to it into the in the line so that when you do put the paint down it'll only spread there. Okay, that's so here we go. See how it's dabbing in? So you want to get a light base of color. You got too much color, too much water rather, also. You can dab it up. So I'm just cleaning off the brush, trying to get as much water off as I can. And you see how you can 
pull up the color. Patience, that is one of the skill sets <laughs> or requirements for a watercolor. You gotta let it dry in between, unless you do work wet on wet. I typically, depending on the painting, will do combinations. The wetter, the more spread out it will get, as you can see. Let's see, going with a little bit of the orange. While that's still wet, let's see, where do I want some color? Right in here. All right, see how that's blending a little bit in here. It also will dry a little different than what you see going down, typically on the lighter side. You can speed up the drying by blowing on it, getting a hair dryer, or just walking away, letting it do its thing. And you don't have to worry too much about it buckling I probably should have taped this down, but it's okay. You'll see that as the water starts to run out of the brush, you get more of a coloring process happening. And as the paper dries, same thing. It becomes more of a strategic coloring with paints. So the purpose of these lessons are going to be quick. Show you some techniques along the way. And you'll see that I'm also kind of going in a brush, a fur-like pattern, leaving some of the white of the paper behind. This is a small one, so you're not going to get as much overall detail as you would on the larger ones that I do, the 5x7s. Alright, let's see. Going in with the cadmium red hue. Again, it's, I look at it as more of a dark orange. All right, let's put a dab there. Oop. Okay, I didn't like how that happened, which is another thing. So you take a piece of paper towel, make it a point, and you can pull out, lift out the color that you didn't want there. That's a little... All right, that's a little better. That just showed that it wasn't dry enough. This paw is going to be, the tips of the paws, front of the paws, are going to be the darker colors. Alright, let's see, go into here. Yeah, 
and it's about layers. your brush in between as you go. some of the color from the tail. Bottom of this tail is going to be varying shades of lighter color. And this leg's into shadow due to the light coming down here, so that's going to be a little darker up to there. Alright, I'm going to go and add a little bit of the parts of uh, regular sienna, rather, to the orange. The Start darkening this up, introducing the sienna. Again, it's all about layers, layering, layering, layering. It will dry differently and darker. It's just me blowing on it. That's part of the reason I didn't tape, because I'm going to be spinning this around. You don't think something's dark enough, you kind of have to wait for it to dry, go in with a little more color. I tend to... I keep having to remind myself about taking it slow. Don't rush. Good. 
section. A little bit of blending. Trying to find this shoulder or something. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. While that's drying, I'm going to work on making my black darker color. I'm activating some Prussian blue. Focus on the color, creating the black. While that's drying. Next is the burnt sienna. Oops, sorry. I'm up here mixing it, getting it as wet to activate. And just kind of moving the brush around, picking up pigment. Then I'll put it into and it's kind of a how dark do you want it to go type of process. Right now I'm picking up the Payne's gray while that's drying still. Okay, activating the Payne's gray. Sometimes I use Daniel Smith tubes for this, but for now, since we're doing, I'm focusing on the Cotman paint, I just want you to see it from here. So now you'll see it's going to get dark mixed in with that the color, cleaning off the brush. And I think I'll add a little more blue to it. There we go, that's a little better. All right, let's do that on the sample sheet. All right, that's pretty good. You'll see here in the sampling, there's not a lot of water on it, so you can get really fine strokes. And as that dries, you're adding layers and darkness. And by the way, the brush I'm using is the Silver Black Velvet number four. 3000S round. I think you can see that. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. Silver, black, velvet, 300, 3000S round, number four. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my brush a little bit. All right, let's, if you touch it, it feels cool then you'll know that it's drying. And see how I just kind of pushed on the back a little bit to straighten out the puffiness? There's another trick to that. When it's fully dry, you can wet the back. All right, let's go and grab the darker color. I'm gonna blow on this again. Okay. Go 
going with a darker mix of black. Dip in water, drying off, taking off the excess water. I don't want this part to be soupy. This is gonna just basically go on. Creamy. Creating some fur strokes with this. Now when this dries, we can define some of the, more of the paw. to blend this out a little bit. So I wet the brush, took off extra paint, water in there. I want to blend this in. And do the same with up here. Blend it in. Good. Dipping into the darker color again. Define. The structure. neat where they have multicolors, the black paws. Alright, I'm gonna go into this black mixture to the sepia because I want to pull up some more of the browns but not be black. So sepia along with the black color. So as you can see, I'm mixing the sepia into the black mix, give it more of a brown tint. So, all right, so I'm gonna take out some of the extra water, go back into the color, 
there. That's a decent brown, darker brown, because then the tail doesn't have any black, but I want to carry in the brown so it differentiates from the paw as much as I can get. Doing fur lines. Just define this a little bit. See, as it's drying, I'm going back over it and it's actually getting darker. Alright. And I'm taking a fairly clean brush water. Taking out the extra bit of water. And I'm going to blend this in a little bit. Soften it up, basically. I'm going to go into this with a little more of the darker orange slash cadmium red into this area here to kind of spark it up. I also want to bring in a little of the sepia first. I mean yellow ochre, yellow ochre. Up here, round off that shoulder a bit. Blend that in. this note. Alright, going into the cadmium red You. Alright, let's see where do I want to put that right in here. I want to make this a little more pronounced on the red. Just to lift a little bit right here. So it's not quite. There we go. And here. You can wet the tip of your paper towel. Just kind of dab where you want to pull out some of the color. Going into the well, that's drying. I'm gonna define this fur. I'm gonna add some shadow. A little bit of shadow over here using the 
Payne's gray and the blue section. There. Pull that out. There we go. Let that soak into the paper to give it a little bit of tone. Pointing off my paper towel. I think it's a little too wet for that to uh, really do what I want. Going into the orange. As you can see, it's about layers. And as a piece dries, you can go over it again to create that punch. volume and darken that under here a little bit what I did is added some of the Sienna, a sepia rather, into the orange. Create some volume if you can. Yeah, let's see. This I want to go in here. Oops, straggler. What I did was grab the yellow ochre to blend this in a little bit more. Just a little bit of water. Activate it again. Take 
got the extra water. Come in. Create a glaze. I'm going to pull some Payne's Gray, which is kind of on the bluish tint. I'm going to put that over here. Really clean out the brush. Get some water, slightest bit of the gray, Payne's Gray. Great. Some shadows. in the white. Now this is gonna dry. I'm just dabbing some of the darker red, trying to create some volume. some of this. So what I did, grabbed the brush, cleaned it, added some water. Gonna grab a clean paper towel, which I happen to have in my pocket, which drives my wife nuts. <laughs> and I walk around with paper towels in my pocket for this reason. Just dabbing water. Lift up some color from this spot here so that the muzzle cheeks are a little more defined. Got a little muddier than I wanted. There we go. Go back to above the ear. Let that water sit for a second. Let it sit there for a second. Dry off the brush. Pointing up the paper towel and sucking up the water. And then you take your brush that's clean and mostly dry. And you work with that and the Color, the brush, water, paper towel. Painting with the water right now. Press down, see how it's getting, it's pulling up. There. Blend in. Go in with a wet brush. Take out some of the extra. And you can go in and blend as it's drying. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna grab a little bit of a little bit of sepia. I want this a little darker in the top of the muzzle. There we go. And a little bit right here. Not quite. All right, so go ahead and pull out that bleed. That part's not dry. <laughs> Grabbing a little bit of the orange, the red, rather. 
going to darken up under here, over here, just to give it the volume. Light's kind of shining off the side there. The orange. I'm gonna glaze over this so it's not so brown. The trick is to try and keep it from getting muddy. There. Now, we can call this done. However, there's a couple of spots I want to kind of blend in. I made his back a little large, more arched. So I'm going gonna, gonna to cover over that line a little bit. Then I drew the sketch. There we go. And... Not that I went outside the lines, but right here I want this to show a little more definition. So I wet it and pulled. Wet and dab. I want this leg here maybe to be a little less dark. I'm going into the orange. I'm gonna glaze over it. Pop it out a little bit. Give it more of a yellowish orange tint. I'm drying this off. I want to do the belly right in here. Give it a little bit of the sepia. Sepia. Sorry if I'm throwing R's in there when it shouldn't be. I'm originally from the Boston area. <laughs> All right, so I want to define this a little bit with some fur. ever so lightly. Drawing some fur marks. Okay, that's not bad. There we go. It's a little drier. So I can do what I wanted, which is tie that in with some fur. like what I did up top there. So as you can see, you make mistakes, make your changes, you can fix them. There. Let's go in with uh, the orange. Glazes, layers, patience. All right, that's it. That I think is a good quick lesson. So 
It's just a matter to let it dry. You can always come back into it and fix it. Like I'm looking at it now as it's drying, I want to probably blend this shoulder in a little better. So I'm going over that dark area that I had. I'm going to come in with some orange. Blend it in. Take out and lift. There we go. That's a little better. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you want, you can actually add a little bit of color under here. Just to help pop it off the background a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take the paint's gray after wetting that and just have a few spots. All right, I'm back again. Sorry about that. Stupid technical difficulties. So I spread some of the Payne's gray down here below the fox, just to give it a little bit of texture, other than stark white. I'm taking a paper towel and dabbing away. Do the same thing back here, just to give it a little bit of contrast. Maybe stand it out a little bit. Let that sit for a second. And there we go. I do wanna pull Give it a little bit of texture. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see what happens. All right, that's not too bad. Again, just a little bit of a texture. So I'm gonna pull a little bit from this tail real quick. Right in here, wet brush, working it into the paint and dab. There we go. This here just a little extra water, let it sit. Probably about a 10 second count. And then don't pull, don't brush, don't slab, just kind of dab. And there we go. And we got ourselves a quick fox. And it's an art card. Size is two and a half by three and a half. Feel free to trade it with somebody if you want. Keep it, frame it, sell it. You can get about uh, 10 to 20 bucks for it. Okay, thanks. Don't forget to like, share, hit subscribe if you liked what you saw. Feel free to ask any questions and have a good day.